And then there's uh, there's Portnoy and uh, Tenev, of course, uh, last night talking about uh, Robin Hood uh, in a way that uh, perhaps financial media is just now getting up to speed with. Take a listen. The firm that's supposed to have our back is essentially the one who put us in this mess. Look, I mean, we again, I'll just say the last thing I want to do is create this problem for our customers where they want to buy something and they can't. Right. So. I'm going to do everything I can to make sure we don't see this happen again. Uh, we we believe people should be able to trade what they want, and that's the whole reason we exist. It's the whole reason we brought zero commissions to this market with no account minimums. So I raised $3.4 billion with the team in 72 hours, which I, I don't know if it's been done before. A couple of stories here, Jim. One is just the in, the scrutiny of the Robin Hood model. The other is the role of Portnoy, part interrogator, uh, part advocate. I thought it was rather amazing. I'm mean, sitting there watching it, riveted like many other people, because I didn't. Uh, from the, if you remember at that very beginning, it looked like Vlad wasn't going to show. It was going to be like one of these empty chair pylons, and Portnoy was going to just Portnoy was just going to destroy him uh, without him being there. And then Vlad comes in. He's wearing the Taco Tuesday hat. He's got a much better haircut than he had in front of Congress, and he handles himself so well that I thought he almost disarmed Dave until the end when Dave said, "Listen, I'm not going to wish you good luck, and I think your company's basically going to fail." Uh, but it was I found it was riveting because this is and David, you know this. This was the so-called betrayal of the little guy for the big guy. And I didn't feel that happened after I listened to what Vlad said. Why didn't you feel that? I think it was a betrayal of the regulators who really screwed Vlad, Vlad because they changed the... They, they, there was like a constant different amount that he had to owe. Okay, now he shouldn't have been so proud about saying I raised money. Hey, I raised money, so I didn't get close. You don't think that they had a fundamental misunderstanding of the risk in their business the same way that perhaps uh, Gabe Plotkin didn't fully understand the risk that he had in shorting so much GameStop? I mean, I think they did. Oh, uh, and I don't think there's any doubt that they had, they ran out of money. Oh, no, I'm sorry. You're absolutely, no, what I'm saying is, is that there was a clear liquidity issue. He yeah. said that. At first, he dodged it. He called the other No, L I word. know. And he they has to dodge it because, as I've said, once you admit you have a liquidity problem, you're done. Right. Yeah, he, no. But he totally screwed up. I like the fact that he apologized and screwed up. He shouldn't have taken credit for raising money with a gun to his head. Well, that's great. I'd like to see the P&L that he showed. But there was this disagreement about how much he owed that, was a, that seemed a little mercurial on the regulators. But, yeah, he totally screwed up. But it did not, he did not say he didn't. And there was a dispute also about who sold GameStop that week. CNBC put out some numbers saying that retail was seller. But in the end, you know, who's the winner here? Square? Uh, right. with, with, I mean, with it, cash, how damaged is Robin Hood's business model, which, it want, which prior to this certainly seemed poised to potentially go public pretty soon yeah. and, and at quite a valuation? I mean, I think their owners uh, have learned the hard way what that business really is. Right. Well, I mean, would you it not want... It a lot of capital. When Dan Schulman came on uh, PayPal, he said, listen, one of our biggest assets, we have 4,000 people in compliance. I mean, I, 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 I don't know how few people that they had in compliance, but... The difference here, David, Robinhood is an app, okay? Yeah. It's an app. Other things are companies. E-Trade, Morgan said, a company, okay? Compliance, regulators, understand cash. Now, it, it, to Vlad's credit here, you know, the DTC just came. I don't know if you saw that. They just came out with what he, what he wants, which is faster clearing. But, yeah, Dave, you're right. I mean, it was a complete and utter screw-up. And to try to take credit for being able to raise money with a gun to your head, I would not be proud of that. I would not. That's nothing to be proud of. No. They made it through. They have a much better understanding of their business now right. at Robin Hood. But he did and come on. He did go on. Yeah, he's willing to. He's willing to. I know. I'm not sure I, you would. It's well. Ill, perhaps it's ill advised. No, it was non It was non Portnoy, non-common. who's uh, quite combative. Well, I, I, yeah, Carl, Carl, there was a moment where he just said basically, yeah, I mean, yeah, we had a liquidity problem. Now, JP Morgan is always the great late JP Morgan would say if you ever had to admit that you had that, then you're done. Uh, but he doesn't seem very done. Uh, he, and again, uh, it was kind of out of body because uh, he was in front of Congress and then he's in front of the Grand Inquisitor, uh, Dave Porter. <laughs> Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.